I love a good mystery. I really do. And we've never had one in Star Wars before. I mean, we've had questions that needed answering, and they eventually got answered. But I'm talking like a traditional mystery. And wow, it works so well in Star Wars. Now, not only do I like mysteries, but I'm also partial to the dark side. I took my sorting test, got into Slytherin, and that's the house I wanted. I was like, oh yeah. And I've always looked at the Sith and been like, what's going on over there? Loved Kylo Ren. I was a Raylo. I was a Raylo. And also Loki is one of my favorite Marvel characters. Loved his show. Absolutely loved it. As did, as did many of us. I just find the complexity of the dark side and the anti-heroes we so often find there very interesting. So I was predisposed to enjoying the Acolyte, as many of you are, uh, who are right there with me. But I think this show is good overall. I would hope that many people would enjoy it, but if you like mysteries and the dark side of things, then you know, this is definitely for you. Now I realize that the trailers have been weak. I was not impressed with them either. I had very low expectations for this show. I've had, I've had a lot of low expectations for a lot of stuff lately because the studio PR, PR campaigns are off, right? Like I know that studios, for instance, want to protect the mysteries of their movies and shows, and the Acolyte has many. And I loved going in, not knowing anything. That was wonderful. Don't even look at the Wikipedia page. There are spoilers on there. I loved, I loved going in knowing absolutely nothing about the Acolyte and having that unfold before me. Oh, it was a great experience. But you still have to be able to advertise this stuff, right? So Disney and all of the studios in Hollywood really have to figure out how to be able to, to, to maintain these mysteries and this level of suspense and have us go in blind, but still also make us make sure we're interested in going in in the first place. And I don't think the Acolyte trailers have done that. Uh, and as I started the four episodes that were given to press in advance, four of eight, so I've seen 50% of the show, I was frustrated to not be watching another season of The Mandalorian and or, or Ahsoka, you know, the good live action Star Wars show, but instead starting yet another new series. I was like, why? Why a new story? Can I continue the ones that I'm enjoying? But lo and behold, The Acolyte is not only really good, but it's in fact my favorite live action Star Wars show to date. I know, it's hard to believe. You're just gonna have to watch it. I, the, seeing, seeing will be believing for many of you. Two episodes drop tonight, they're incredible. If you don't like those two episodes, you're not gonna like the show. But it's gonna drop at night, I believe, um, you know, tonight. Uh, I think it might trend on social media. I think you might wanna be part of that experience. You know, give yourself the, the opportunity to love it. I just think, go, go in, I think you're gonna like it. I think you're gonna like it. I think you're gonna be as pleasantly surprised as I was. But I think it has the sophistication of Andor, but unlike Tony Gilroy, who is disdainful of the fantasy elements of Star Wars, Leslie Headland embraces those as well. So that she creates something that not only feels fresh, but at the same time also feels like classic Star Wars. Ah, one of the best things about the Acolyte is the score. As good as, not only as good as John Williams' iconic score, but it levels up the show the same way that Natalie Holt's score leveled up Loki. It's so freaking good. I was like, who is doing the score for this? So I looked it up and it was, I discovered it's uh, Michael Abel's who, you know what else he did? He did Jordan Peele's movies. And that makes a lot of sense because the Acolyte shares uh, a similar vibe to Jordan Peele's work. Uh, we've been wanting Peele to get into franchise work. And I think this is kind of like a preview of what that would look like. Peele takes classic genres and tropes and pairs them with diverse casts, not significantly changing the vibe of the material. You know, some diverse projects wear their diversity on their sleeve, not Jordan Peele's work, not the Acolyte. They instead show that the material can be just as strong and then broader and more modern with these diverse characters. I think it's exciting because the Acolyte, it's classic Star Wars. It feels like classic Star Wars, more so than I think anything that we've seen so far, uh, current, you know, recently, but, but with more types of people able to participate. And again, as I said, to me, that's very exciting. But the Acolyte also feels fresh, not only because of the diverse cast, but the story, the story is, it's different in this space and that is so cool, but yet it's still remaining faithful to the space. It's still Star Wars. They have not changed Star Wars at all. In fact, as I said, it's the most faithful I've seen, 
Disney Star Wars be to the to the original idea of George Lucas and you know and Dave Filoni, uh, who's carried on Lucas's work so well. Uh, so we've, as I said, we've never seen a Star Wars murder mystery or a thriller. I mean, it's all well. We'll talk about Andor in a second because I'm sure some of you are typing that right now. But Star Wars is usually sci-fi fantasy, sometimes a Western, like with The Mandalorian. And I guess Andor does have the qualities in some ways of a thriller, but a spy thriller, right? But the Acolyte, again, is a murder mystery. And not only does it have those darker elements to it, you know, Andor was kind of like, you know, Captain America, Winter Soldier, like that kind of a thing. But this has like, this is like multi, this is like Wanda. Oh, that's a good comparison. It's like Wanda, right? So there are horror elements to it. So freaking cool. Oh my gosh. The show also, by the way, has great cliffhanger endings, which all the best streaming shows have. You're like, oh, next one, please. Next one. Now, some of you, when I, I discovered when I tweeted my initial reaction to the show, some of you were like, oh, there's no mystery. We already know one of the big, big, the, you know, the, the big reveal. And so I hope nobody spoiled that for you. Be careful even with the comments down below in this video. But that's revealed in the very first episode and it's cemented in episode two. There are many mysteries at play here. Mysteries that you have not even heard of. They're fantastic mysteries. And one of the coolest thing about the Acolyte is these, by the way, one of, so one of the mysteries, and I'll, this isn't a spoiler because it's the, it's the idea of the whole show, is the Jedi wondering what the heck are Sith? Ah, that, that was even cooler than I, I thought it would be. Like they've never seen Sith before. They've never seen anyone use the force in this manner. And they're like, they're horrified. They're like just completely dumbfounded. And they have reason to be because the way the Sith use the force is absolutely incredible. I've never, I mean, I don't know what happened to the Sith, but they're so cool here. Like they're not, they're cooler here. I mean, of course you have moments like when Darth, you know, at the end of um, uh, Rogue One, you know, the Darth Vader hallway fight. But oh my God, the end of episode four, again, I say, I've seen the first four. There is a moment with our new Sith character where I actually shouted out at the screen. I was like, oh, come on. Oh my God, that's incredible. I mean, I would, I've never seen anything so cool and disturbing in Star Wars. I was like, I was, as, I was as just dumbfounded and shocked as the Jedi were. And they gave them again, as I said, a reason to have that reaction. It was incredible. I can't wait for you to see it. It's gonna light up the internet. It, at least it should. The fighting in the Acolyte is also excellent. And in the first four episodes that I saw, none of it really features lightsabers. And I still loved it, I know. You know why I loved it? Well, first of all, a lot of force use, which was one of the things that I loved about the fights in Star Wars Rebels. But it's also an exploration of how Jedi fight. Ah, oh, I love this. They fight almost here entirely defensively because they do not want to fight, right? It's really a fascinating idea. And it reminds me a bit of Donnie Yen's, who was also in Star Wars, by the way, but his Ip Man movies, where he played a priest-like figure. Ah, I mean, also there are some other cool elements of the Jedi and their abilities that are introduced here that we'll talk about when we see them in the show and my breakdowns, which I was like, that's, that's such a cool idea. I loved it so much. Uh, I'm excited also as the show progresses to study how the Sith fight in contrast. Again, at the episode, end of episode four, we just get a little bit of taste of it and I'm hungry for more. And also I would like to say that there are, you know, again, no spoilers, but there are other force wielders in play as well, which I also thought was a really cool element of the show. So the title of the Acolyte, it, what it refers to is a religious disciple. And this show, more than any other Star Wars content, explores the different religions in the world of Star Wars and what it means to be a part of each of them, uh, which also is very refreshing, but yet at the same time, very authentic to Star Wars. It's such a cool exploration of Star Wars, uh, especially today when there are more atheists than ever. And also because of technology and the way the world is, People feel more isolated than ever. They feel like they don't belong to anything. And the Acolyte underscores that in the world of Star Wars, almost everyone does belong to something, even like the Rebellion. I mean, that's just, I mean, there's no Rebellion here, but when you think about it, you're like, wow. I mean, that's just really neat. At quick glance, like for instance, in the trailers, the show has looked cheap. And some of you, again, when I tweeted my initial reaction said that was a concern that you had. And it's something I had, it's a concern that I had going into the show as well. But for some reason, when you actually watch it, and I suggest watching it at night, by the way, because it's a dark, creepy show, right? That will really contribute to the vibe. Like watching a horror movie in daylight hits different than if you watch it at night. And I would make the same comparison here. 
but it does not feel cheap at all. I'm really surprised at how good it, it comes across. Hedlund has made a point of saying that they did not film with the volume and used as many practical sets as possible. Now, you can't really tell visually that difference, although I will say lately with shows that use the volume, we've been seeing the, the border, right? The circle, you're like, oh, I can see where the set ends and the volume begins. And here you don't see that, so that's nice. So the world seems a little bigger and authentic and organic because of that. But perhaps the practical sets have also helped the actors because the acting here is really, really strong as well. And I believe it's as good as the acting in Andor, which I believe also used largely practical sets. Uh, the only tiny fault in the show is that it does not feel like it takes place 100 years before episode one. It feels like all other Star Wars content. In fact, I would expect any other character from Star Wars to just waltz right on in. And in fact, you wish they would because these characters are so cool. You're like, darn it, you're stuck 100 years earlier. Well, how are we gonna get you crazy kids together? because I love this cast. Ah, oh, Amandala Stenberg has been trying to make her mark in Hollywood for a while now. Her big break, of course, was Rue in The Hunger Games, and she made some waves with The Hate You Give. But wow, she deserves for this to be her breakout role. And by the way, to be respectful, I looked it up because I knew with Stenberg, she has specified her pronouns, and they're not just they, them, but also she, her. So I just wanted to make sure that you knew that I, I checked that out. She is incredible here, and I can't say too much about her role because again, in case you've managed to avoid spoilers as I had, I would like you to, to experience the story unfolding as it's intended. So I'll just say that I'm very impressed with her nuance and that she comes across as extremely likable and relatable. What a great lead. Then of course, there's Squid Game's Lee Jung Jae, who not only has his first English language role here, but he had to learn English to play Master Soul. Oh, he's so good, wow. To me, he is instantly an iconic Jedi character, and I can't say anything else. Uh, Logan's Daphne Keen is his current Padawan, but unfortunately, she is buried under some pretty silly makeup and prosthetics. I do not like the design of her character, but I am happy to say that as the episodes progress, she does kind of manage to get out from underneath that makeup and prosthetics. You know, she's still stuck wearing them, but her performance breaks through. Charlie Barnett, Jedi eye candy, and you'll see what I mean. But in all seriousness, uh, I really like the way the Jedi have been cast here. Considering their principles, I think the casting reflects who would really actually be Jedi. You know, in the past, George Luke, I mean, I guess there is a change to how Jedi are defined, but I think it's, again, I think it's fascinating. So originally George Lucas had cast his uh, Jedi as space medieval knights. You know, that was the approach that he took. But here, Hedlund reimagines the Jedi as almost social workers who can fight. And I think that is a really interesting modern interpretation. I, I'm just in love with that idea. I think it's fascinating. Uh, Manny Jacinto is also very charismatic, and he's likened his character to Han Solo, by the way. And we again, I've only seen half of the show. We'll see what happens if he becomes more Han Solo-like as the show goes on. But so far, he is seductive, but he is seductively dark. I mean, he's... He's really well cast. I think his character is very interesting. Carrie Ann Moss, we can't really talk about her because again, this is a non-spoiler review, but she is as impressive as ever and gives the show real star power. You're like, ah, oh, Carrie Ann Moss, Trinity. I don't want to discuss Jodie Turner Smith's role either because again, in case you've managed to avoid spoilers, it's a very cool surprise, but she's excellent. You know, many of us have been like, Disney, here's your storm. We felt that way for a while, and this show just makes that even more clear. And we have a Wookiee. Everybody loves a Wookiee, but I gotta say, his face looks so much like a cute little dog that I found it a little bit distracting. I was like, what's that cute little dog face doing on a giant Wookiee? So, I mean, I guess it's funny, you know, I wonder why they don't do more Wookiee styling like they do for those cute little dogs. Uh, Cause it would be as distracting as this is. All right, so I love The Acolyte. I think it's both very cozy with the classic Star Wars feel, but also refreshing as it brings a new genre and it widens who participates in the world of Star Wars. I'm excited to further explore the Sith and see how they came to be and find out the answers to the many mysteries that are introduced so far. I'd say based on the first four episodes that what really makes this show work is creator Hedlund, composer Abels, and Stenberg and Lee. They are really doing phenomenal work here. It's a very strong show, and let's just hope that Star Wars hasn't distanced its fans so much at this point 
that it goes unnoticed. I mean, Andor got recognition from uh, some fans and also from the industry and the media, but its ratings were awful, just awful. Hopefully the Acolyte can, can get that recognition, but also the ratings. But I mean, it's, it's tough. Star Wars is in a tough, a tough spot right now. I'll be doing breakdowns weekly starting tonight with the premiere of episodes one and two back to back. It's gonna be a phenomenal night of television, I, I think. So I hope you'll tune in. And then join me afterwards to discuss. Share those thoughts down below, subscribe today. And of course, as always, you can check out some more videos right now.